You know, we don't know what's in other people's hearts. We hardly know what's in our hearts. The scripture says we can be fooled by our own hearts. But there's a little verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 5 that says, Therefore judge nothing before the time, until the Lord comes, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. There are many things that God's people have done over the years they've completely forgotten about. Kindnesses they've shown, words of encouragement, a hand on the shoulder, a weeping with those who weep. Many things that we have forgotten, and maybe the recipients have forgotten. But the Lord has not forgotten. Every detail is remembered and will be rewarded in a day to come. This little story occurred some years ago. I was in my home fellowship in Michigan. We'd had a a supper, and uh, I had come a little late. I had some other things that I was busy with, and, and a lot of the people had already got up from the table. There was a sister there named Joyce, and she had actually uh, been serving in the kitchen, as she was wont to do, and she was sitting down having her supper. I sat down across from her and began to talk, and I asked her about her, her story. And, you know, this is something that's so important. Many of us don't even know how our elders got saved. We don't Uh, follow up with a lot of people and find out how God has worked in their lives. To sit down with an older Christian and ask them what books were encouraging to you and what was some advice you were given as a young person that really has stood the test of time. Well, I think think we don't realize what riches we have within arm's reach of people who have had experiences with God, answered prayers, opportunities to serve, perhaps souls they've led to Christ, and to find out how the gospel came to their family and how God has preserved them all through these many years. And so when I asked this dear sister her story, she told me that her parents were not saved, and they had bought a little farm outside of Detroit, and Not too long after they'd been living there a while, their cow got out from the pen and had made its way down the street and had gone into someone else's yard and had destroyed their garden. And uh, so her father went down to apologize and make restitution if possible. And the lady said, oh no, don't worry about that. That's just fine. The important thing is that we get to meet our neighbors. Well, when he got back, he told Joyce's mother, you've got to meet that lady. (laughs) This is different than anything we've ever seen. Of course, it was because the lady was a believer. And uh, eventually, they were able to bring Joyce's parents out under the sound of the gospel. And they both professed Christ as Savior. Uh, Joyce came along. She was a little babe at the time. And... um, Her mother told her afterwards that her father had gone on well for the Lord. He had had a problem with a foul tongue and and, uh, and, and violent temper and and a serious problem with drink, and God had delivered him. But then, when she was just a little toddler, maybe two or three years old, I'm not sure exactly, there was some serious problem in the local church, and the men had a meeting on a Sunday afternoon. And Joyce's father went to the meeting. And she doesn't know what went on, but whatever it was, as they say, there's no trouble like local church trouble. Whatever it was, it completely knocked him off balance. And he became very angry against the Christians and eventually turned back to drink. And she said he was an angry drunk and he made our life hell. And that's how she grew up. That's all she knew of her father was this angry man, this man who mistreated her and abused her mother. Well, time went by. Joyce got saved. Eventually, she married uh, a dear Christian man. They uh, had a family of their own, quite successful in business, and they lived in our area. 
Joy said that when her father got old, he got Alzheimer's and he couldn't look after himself. And so she took him into the home. This man who had abused her and, and given her such a hard time in life. But as she cared for him, uh, he seemed to soften a little. But then one night she was sitting, late, very late, she was sitting by his bed. And suddenly in the stillness, he began to pray. He thought he was back in the Great Depression years, and he didn't have a job. And he was asking God to help him get a job. Because he said, you know how much I love my wife, and how much I love my little daughter, and I want to provide for them. And she said, as I sat there with tears running down my cheek, for the first time in my life, I heard my father pray. And I realized he did love God, and he did love me, and he loved my mother. And I never would have known it if he didn't have Alzheimer's and if I hadn't taken him in. That love was hidden down under some asphalt. And you know, Joyce didn't know it was there. Her mother, maybe in years past, hoped that it was. But the Lord knew and provided that little opportunity for Joyce to hear from his own lips a prayer on behalf of his family. Dear Christian, I can't underline enough the glorious fact that it's all grace. From start to finish, it's grace all the way home. And sometimes we meet people and we find them to be brusque and maybe rude and hard at us and we we may not realize what a hard life they've had and the damage that's been done to them. But down under all of that, God is able to look into the very center of a being and make manifest the counsels of the heart. So, if you've got someone in your family and they're hard, and they're difficult to deal with, and they hurt you every time you get close to them. Just remember this. God is able to soften the hardest soil. He's, a, he's an expert at this, at taking people who seem to be hopeless and implanting in their hearts his own seeds that eventually spring up into life. So be encouraged. Pray on. Don't give up. And remember that there's coming a day when God is going to show us a lot of things we've forgotten or things we never knew. And all of them will be praiseworthy in the presence of God.